Hey guys, so today we get to look at the VIP Double Master Lands and they might look familiar to you because they are a reprint out, out of the Unhinged Lands. Now the Unhinged Lands I think are some of the most beautiful lands in the game and the way they designed it, I mean this is obviously very good looking. I'm sure that the foils will also command a premium price. And this is a very common. Um, it's not going to be too difficult to get these cards because they are land. So if you buy the VIP, you might get Fetch lands too. I don't know. Maybe there is a land slot. It's pretty fascinating though. They definitely are going above and beyond. Uh, anything of value will be reprinted. So the Double Masters VIP edition. These are the basic lands, by the way. The basic lands. So you're going to get a lot of them. And I assume that you will also get lots of foils. Uh, VIP packs might also have fetch lands. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense here. I think it's pretty fascinating. Because they, they have to justify. They absolutely has to justify the price tag on the VIP. Which is incredibly high. I mean... Magic cards keep getting more and more expensive, and this is how they do it. Is if the land slot has artwork that is reprinted, and you know the artwork is, you know, people have wallpaper of the artwork, they have the prints. I'm reading here that Noah Bradley actually has some of his land in this set as well. But uh, we'll see when if that happens. Now, is the original Unhinged better than the new one? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think I like the borders, and I don't actually like having the basic land island box. But is this a way to make the product more expensive? Is it a way to do premium? Um, look at the Godzilla lands, which I made fun of. They're very expensive nowadays. Uh, apparently, they're in high demand. A hundred dollars a pack. And Wizard of the Coast had to do absolutely nothing. They didn't pay a new artist. Uh, they didn't get a new commission. They didn't work on it. I mean, this is absolutely the laziest way to make packs expensive, which eventually will come and bite them in the butt. I mean, again, let me reiterate why this is bad. Wizard of the Coast is selling a subpar product and we know this because we look at the print quality, which I'll show you a picture of in a moment. And they're just mass producing things that they already know have value uh, in the secondary market. Which again, you might say it's gambling, not gambling. Because like, if they recognize the secondary market, then it does become like gambling, right? Because then they put the expensive cards, if you will, $100 bills into these packs. And it's uh, a gamble whether or not you get one when you open one. I think it's pretty ridiculous that there's $100 a pack. But you got to get to $100 somehow, right? Bye, guys.